Welcome back, heroes. I have not given you our pledge this uh, this time, so I will go ahead and do that. We here at the Homebrew Channel reserve the right to be horrible, crass, and crude when this story calls for it, but also to be delightful, sweet, and tug on your heartstrings. And remember, noble heroes, do try this at home. Please give us a like and a subscribe down below if you are enjoying our content. And let's get started with the characters soaring out of the royal drapery. No? Can you back it up just a smidge? Mm -hmm. To us getting on the mounts. As uh, <laughs> do you all take mounts that are similar to the drakes that you took from the scene with the queen yesterday? Don't we? Whatever's most comfortable. She wouldn't really care. Right. These are just to. That they they are looking at minis of small dragons uh, to determine their drake, but what color these are does not necessarily determine what your drake looks like. Oh, sorry, I just assumed it did. You can choose what type of uh, personality your drake has, since there are hundreds of drakes in here for you to choose from. She'd literally ask which one's the fastest, and then choose that one. Mm -hmm. You have a slipstream ruby colored. Drake, uh, and it is quite vicious looking, uh, it has a skull-like visage to its face, uh, and as it rockets off from the cliffside in the Royal Drakery, um, actually, since we said you wanted to go to the Drake Mountain, uh, what did Juniper do when she sought her own drink. She does not. She already said she was not going to get a drink. Mm -hmm. uh, she looks around and she just goes... The donkey comes down the tunnel in the middle of the drakery, being snapped at viciously by the surrounding drakes, but without any startlement to it. She reaches out and she scratches Clover's ear. I'll be flying over sea. Your donkey can fly? Of course. Yeah, like all donkeys. The donkey is going to kind of go... And then look back at June. <laughs> she chuckles. She just goes... It's hard to see an expression on a donkey. But that's what you get. I know, right? She just she she just walks away. She's just like I I can't I can't. She gestures for him to lay down so she can just easily sit on him sideways. She sits side saddle, and she's very elegantly sitting there. How and was he gets your up. day then? God, that's creepy. Oh, you can't hear it. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> it's been. Been a day. How about have yours? Have you eaten? Yes, have you? She smiles <laughs> and she chuckles when she does that. The donkey snickers. Yeehaw! <laughs> She's gonna start a little bit. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, June is chuckling. So, yeah. It, anyway, the donkey she and just her both kind of throw each other's heads back at the same time. Yuki's gonna lean over to Bali and say, She just gets weirder and weirder. Uh, suddenly, the donkey's gonna like... <clears throat> and just is off down the hallway. Except for its legs don't move any differently than if he was just quietly ambling. It's like it's on a, uh, a moving road. The do donkey's just like... But it's like... I don't think it'll have trouble keeping up. It... Honestly is really weird, almost ridiculous, like near absurd looking, but they are very fast. It's not near, it is. Uh, almost <laughs> ridiculous. It's really goofy. Just almost, just a little bit more would be ridiculous. As you all follow... It's a very dumpy looking donkey. 
Yeah, it's got these like hanging ears and it's got a little scruff. Like it's not like super uh, well trimmed or anything. It looks derpy adorable. Mm-hmm. Uh, as the drakes, like these, these slick, cool drakes that are like, uh, like <laughs> bounding along up the stairs, you're going to see the donkey sort of like woof into the room and then like go up to the, the open drake mouth, take off ramp. And just sort of like all the drakes are like running along the ramp and like opening their wings and then like jumping and soaring along. The donkey's just going to like run up all the way to the very edge and then it's like, and like leap off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bali's gonna like Jennifer as she falls very clearly like Yuki's gonna any... be like she's fine <laughs> you're gonna see the donkey just like galloping on the wind as it slowly rises back into sight below the jawline of the drake uh, and then you're gonna see the, the donkey just like gestures forward with his hoof uh, and then is gonna like soar towards the sky <laughs> <laughs> is Wraith keeping pace? Zarafend is going to like sprint towards the edge and then like you'll watch the Kenku like throw their hands up as wings just like burst from his back sort of illusionary at first and then solidify into these brilliant white wings with a sort of burst of blue energy from them and then he leaps into the air as well soaring as an angel over the city and say so, so he, he when his wings are out he has to be in his angel he doesn't have to be, but he tell, he does. He does. Okay, yeah. so, he gets so cool. Yeah. I'm gonna say he may as well get super tall too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> so he will. He's about ten feet tall in that form, and his staff changes into a blazing blue sword covered in flames. Of the blue. pirates are gonna be literally pissing their pants. <laughs> <laughs> that seems reasonable. As they should be. As they should be. Isaac, what kind of Drake do you take, sir? Uh, he said he would have picked out a copper drake, um, but as far as like disposition goes, he'd probably. Are there like uh, animal handlers in this roost, like tending to the drakes? There are almost a hundred employees taking care of the drakes. Okay. From butchers to saddle makers to tamers. Uh, he would find someone and say. Which one of these is going to be the easiest for me to handle? Awesome. Thank you. You are okay. going to be led to a, uh, you said copper, so it is a, the, the color of a bronze coin, um, or a bronze piece, excuse me. Uh, why did I say bronze? It is the color of a copper piece. <laughs> um, and as you look, it has an intricate pattern of weaven scales. Uh, and the drake has very large, sort of owl-like eyes. Uh, and as you get on it, uh, it seems to move very easily and without any fuss. And is going to take off just so. As Prongor sort of... Uh, did you guys decide not to take Prongor? No, Prongor. Correct. He's going to, like, take out a handkerchief and, like, wave it after you. <laughs> Like a, a maiden casting off a, a sailor on a long voyage. He's the best character. Which Western we're writing? Uh, Western is going to take a purple colored beast um, with very large bat like wings. Uh, and she's going to sort of has this thrill of joy as the creature gets up speed. Uh, and then sort of a terrified yelp ah! as it sort of falls for a moment and then swoops upwards to, to catch up to that darned donkey. Um, Bali is going to grip behind you and say, maybe not too fast. <laughs> I don't actually know how well I can control this thing. Maybe fast, Cleavy says. <laughs> we go very fast, he says in a walk's voice. Let's keep up with the donkey. Donkey, he says in your voice. Don't tire out your drink. Uh. 
Clavy's gonna like lean forward and his beak sort of uh, goes past the ball and he is says on. in your own voice, <clears throat> she's so weird. <laughs> Yuffie looks a little bit embarrassed at that one. <clears throat> um, as you all take off, Bali is certainly more afraid than you are, but Shadow is right next to you. Uh, and as the two of you pull up as a pair, you also join the flock that is building, circling up in the sky like vultures. Roland, how about you? I would do the exact same thing she did as for the fastest one. All right. And take whatever I got. Yep. <laughs> Your drake is uh, quite a... Um, you're quite a battle-worn beast, uh, but they assure you that its aged appearance is only a disguise for how fast it is and how driven. As you get upon the uh, sort of like seaweed green color drake, um, it is going to crash towards the end of the runway and then like lobs itself into the air once, twice, and then finally, the third time, it leaps up, and with a beat of its wings, it's going to begin to soar, and then just drops into this dead dive. <laughs> and then it's going to pull up at the last minute, like swooping over the, the houses, as you burr the top of the chimneys, getting a little bit of smoke in your face. And then it pulls up, and is going to like fly ahead of the pack. And say he would be just grinning with like tears, like streaming back into his ears. <laughs> <laughs> you all, uh, and Triss also has joined you all, uh, and she is flying on the sturdiest, broadest drake that can carry someone a little heavier. And you all take off, flying out over the sea. It's difficult to talk with the great winds that are coursing at your height, but you see all the little ships, little, uh, different docks separated into... Neat little coordinates uh, laid out like a parking lot, so high up above. And you can see the ingenious architecture of bridge walk sort of span out with little compounds on different islands spanning over the water. And the many thousands of bridges look like a tiny little intricate spider web from so high up. And you course out over the sea and you see the great crashing rocks and the ocean. And Please roll a perception check. This is the first time I've rolled a dice today. <laughs> and I rolled a one. One! One! Oh, yes! Ah. I honestly kind of wanted to roll a okay. one. Okay, uh, uh, for a minute I thought that was another one. It's a seven. <laughs> Isaac, what did you get? Got a 16. I think you're going to be our eyes. I got a today. 15. <laughs> DC 22. Nope. Nope. All right. What about Wraith? No. Uh, all right. <laughs> Where's the trip? You guys soar high overhead, taking in the wafting cottony clouds that are um, coming in from the side. But at the current moment, it's actually quite rainy. And it looks like you're headed not towards those fluffy white clouds, but in fact towards some rather serious storm clouds in the north. You'll all see June pull a hood over our head. You will see also the Kenku are marveling at the donkey, who is merely like <laughs> regularly trotting at a slow pace, but somehow is coursing along as fast as any of the drakes. And you see that they're trying to avoid it because when they get near it, their wings kind of wobble with a great wind. All right. You'll also note that there is no wind on June. As the rest of you, your hair billows about and your cloaks uh, struggle to maintain your hoods above your heads. June is in some kind of calm tempest, the eye of the storm. And Jennifer's cloak on the tip of your shoulders, this, the storm clouds are reflected in your shoulders like a mirror. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you all do on the journey? 
I assume that Yuffie could speak with Bali, at least, even up there. You or... can speak if you get close to the other drakes and yell as well. Looking at the storm clouds, she would probably ask her, Have you heard back from Fennish yet? She says, I haven't. I don't think they have... Um, I don't think they have a mailbox on the flotilla. <sighs> she has to come to shore. Well, considering all that's going on, I was hoping... says, it's certainly a disadvantage to living there, isn't it? It is one. Did you hear? She's got a boyfriend now. What? She says. <laughs> she nods. I didn't mention that. I could swear I would remember that. His name is Rand. And what's this Rand like? He's a half-orc. Well, that... I don't know this yet. Continue. Mm -hmm. She always Nothing. had a little bit of a wild streak. I think he might be an entertainer, she says. Like a bard? Or maybe a stripper by his name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good for her. <laughs> his name is Rand Danger. Yuffie's just going to crack up. <laughs> Cleavy goes, he's a stripper. Oh, no. <laughs> you deserve this. Definitely picked up the right part you of that conversation. You deserve this, and it's fantastic. <laughs> uh -huh. Look what you've done, Molly. Look what you did. I forgot he was there, she says. <sighs> he's going to kind of look ahead. He's going to make the sound of falling rain. You're not sure if he's saying the name or suggesting that you may want to pull your hoods up. I was wishing it would look and go, Ran danger. <laughs> no, I was expecting he's going to go, he's going to point to somebody and just go, he's a stripper. Yep. Oh, absolutely. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> and I'm waiting for him to come to me and say, she's weird. <laughs> In your voice. <laughs> Yuffie's going to pull her hood up. I don't know if there's anything to cover. He has a hood as well, right? Yeah. She'll pull that up, too, in front of her. Okay, I'm actually too warm for this. <laughs> <laughs> June's wearing it. I'm not. All right. Do you all try to speak with each other on the journey? You guys will see June is fiddling with something along the way. She's clearly doing something with her hands and occasionally you'll see a glow happen or some light and she looks like she may be writing on something. No, I think otherwise she would be fairly set and just getting there as soon as possible. Is so, this storm like causing rain on us? As soon as maybe uh, about a 45 minutes passes, you just see, like, ahead of you, like, the swipes in the sky of what is clearly torrential rain. It's kind of... Does it look like not just rain, but something really severe? You definitely think if you were on a ship, it might be very severe. One of the Kenku is going to... And makes a very loud noise, like an alarm bell. And he's going to point and... Maybe we should go around, he says in another man's voice. He says, uh, it will be several additional hours to our journey. Yuffie looks down at Klebe. I think we'll have to go around then. June wants to pull out her cloak and look at it. Can she see how far the clouds will extend? As you look down at your cloak, you see from the great viewpoint of a deity up above, look down at the storm clouds and see that they are several miles across. Mm. Can I tell exactly how long I think it would take us to get around it? The storm is decently localized. Um, probably two hours. She's going to do this and amplify her voice so that you can everybody can hear her. 
It'll take us about two hours to go around it. I suggest we do so. Let's do it then. As you swing along the outskirts of the storm, at one point, it's so specifically localized that you can put your hand out and you can feel the rain as you pass by, but this side of the sky is empty. As you swing along, you're going to see the Kenku listen. Also, you additionally hear female laughter coming from the clouds up above. All right. Totally, totally just had a Zelda moment there. Anyway. (laughs) You will see feminine forms formed out of lightning skip through the clouds up above. Yeah, you with me? Are you asking me? Uh, what are you uh, asking? Game. I just... You may roll a advantage arcana check. Sure. Not you. You get a normal one. Ar- arcana check. Why? Because this is a this is just June rolling. What'd you say? This is just uh, June rolling. Well, you can roll as well. Okay, I've only got a plus four, but I crit on it. Oh, wow. Sick. So I'm not sure what, how you want to explain that one away. I choose to take my arc ancient knowledge. Okay. And then get a 19. All right. Uh, so you have heard stories of sailors telling of mischievous female lightning bolts uh, that play deadly tricks on sailors in the middle of storms. Although, it's said that they come down to the water on lightning bolts. Uh, The rest of you have heard of um, what's called sylph lightning. Uh, Basically, at some point or another, an elemental has decided to change into a humanoid form. And then continues to act like frolicking children through the clouds during their playtime before they die out when the storm ends. It's not known why the elementals take on the form of humanoids. Uh, It's thought that perhaps once an elemental tried to make contact with a human and took on their form to do so, and the others copied it. Isaac, with your crit, you additionally know that it is possible to barter passage through the clouds um, with usually a... uh, A price of some kind of conductive metal. Okay. Uh, I'll mention that to June. In case she doesn't already know. Since it is something that you don't know, it's probably fake. (laughs) Okay. She just kind of, she nods and she goes, I don't think it's enough worth, it's not really worthwhile. It's only two hours. In the grand scheme of it, it'll be fine. True. But we'll keep that in mind for next time. I'd never heard of that, Zarafen says adjacent, actually above Isaac. Where did you learn that? Uh, just an old wives' tale I heard from a couple of sailors back in Selenox. Sounds fake, Zarfan <laughs> says. <laughs> Incredible. She just looks up at him and goes, I was trying to be polite. <laughs> what did you say, Isaac? I said it very well, maybe, but those men seem to swear by it. He nods. They have a little bit of liquor before they swore? Maybe. She makes a resolution in her brain to try it out when there's nobody around so nobody can judge her if she Mm -hmm. tried it. Amazing. (laughs) All right. You are, of course, around the storm. I'm glad we didn't try to go through. Oh, me too. (laughs) It's a fast process. You course around it. 
and find yourselves back in clear skies. Caribbean-like seas below you span out in every direction with shallow shorelines of islands, with glistening white sand and covered in shells. Great giant hermit crabs the size of tortoises move along their shores. Yum. Okay. Are we high enough above the water that we don't really have to worry about, like, jumping out? And... Definitely. Way higher. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I was... Yeah, I know. That's a good, good, <laughs> well, thing, good concern. No, I would like to look down and see if we have any, see any signs of merfolk. Uh, after about three quarters of the day has passed, you will look down into a very large spanning coral reef below the level of the water, and you will see giant glowing, uh, like bioluminescent eggs, almost certainly the eggs of a sea serpent. Hmm. Keep an eye on that. Mark it mentally in my brain where that was located. Okay. You do. Um, the eggs are obvious, but uneaten because of the eel, uh, the, the venom that it fills the eggs during their larval stage. Yeah. Um, even the most vicious of predators would leave them alone until they're born, at which time they're about the size of an anaconda. Still terrifying. Um, at some point, Roland would try to write up and ask June for a question. June will look over at you and cork her head. Um, at this point, he's probably gotten pretty comfortable on the Drake, so he's just kind of like, <laughs> like, like, kind of laying on his back and side on it, relaxing. Can There's... he get close enough to me with the wind? Actually, yelling into the wind, the, the sound actually travels much farther because there's no wind blocking it. Okay. Uh, additionally, as night begins to fall, you guys take out what are called bedboards. Um, oh, you basically nice. slot the board into your saddle and then like lean back to like a mostly reclined position on the drake. Do you tie yourself on? Uh, yes, you do. Although the saddle mostly takes care of that. Well, yeah, he'd be, he'd be chilling on his bedboard then. Um, do you know if the messengers can come back to Bridge, Bridgewalk yet? Well, we're no longer in Bridgewalk, so if you really need to talk to one. I just, uh, with everything that happened, I should probably write my girlfriend a letter and let her know I'm alive. Yes, perhaps you should. <laughs> She's actually, she actually does look rather annoyed at you, which is kind of surprising. Yeah, <laughs> He looks at you and goes, I know! Okay, I just was curious if by the time we got back I could do that, but do you think? Why don't you? She was about to suggest, why don't you do it now? And then she looks and see how windblown you are, and she goes, Uh, I don't know, probably. Okay, I just figured I'd ask. Considering I believe that the reason the messengers couldn't come in in the first place had to do with the plague that he put down. I mean, I assume it would be fine. Okay. It's just hours of thought. That was one of the thoughts I had. Yes. It only took you several months. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'll, I'll fly nice. away now. Nice. Away from shaming. Away from Jennifer. <laughs> he he kind of tugs on the, the drake to get the hell away from Jennifer. He's being mean to him right now. <laughs> All right. It's due. For good reasons, but <laughs> still. <laughs> it's fair. I mean, it's a little out of left field, I'll agree. But uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, June picks you... up, re resumes reading the book she was reading. As you pull away from Jennifer, you pull right into Shadow, who's looking at you like, <laughs> I know! I plan on rectifying the situation soon! <laughs> he just rolls over. Okay. <laughs> As you all... It is difficult to sleep your first time. Yeah. Um, you get a couple hours, probably, at most. June appears to be meditating, sitting up straight, with her leg hooked around her uh, pommel. 
You don't see any feathers flying from Zarafen's wings this night. Uh, and he seems to not have any difficulty maintaining the altitude and his alertness throughout the night. Damn, does he have to... Oh, duh, doesn't sleep. Mm-hmm. Right. As mm-hmm. you all continue into the next day, the Kenku are going to uh, pull out this like wooden tablet that has a copy of your map on it, and he's going to kind of point and make a very loud dinging bell and then point and just, like scratch the remainder of your route, showing that you're pretty close at this point. As soon as he puts it away, Juniper, you're hit with a feeling. Mm. A sort of a darkness. Where? Dambluff is directly ahead. Mm. June will immediately go like this, and a, a flash of light appears in front of the, whoever's in the very front that just reads out, stop. <laughs> Many of the drakes immediately sort of wing to a halt as the reins are pulled on, and all of you fly in a cluster together, just a little bit beyond the wingtips of each one. Uh, how far ahead? I've told you before, the sense is not that attuned. Yes, but I can usually tell if it's like, you know, a hundred miles or like... You felt him when you... An inch. He, if you all were both headed to the dragon's lair, when you ascended into the actual crystal forest, and you were about 30 to 40 miles from the cave, that's when you think you felt each other. Uh, okay. I was making sure that, like, if I, you know, raised my voice so that the whole group could hear you. Definitely it, then... not going to hear you. Okay. <laughs> that was my main concern. Do we think we're visible? Definitely unlikely. Okay. Because Horizon, what is it? Oh, well, never mind. Doesn't work in this world. <laughs> well, it kind of... No, no, it doesn't work in this world. Okay. Um, but I don't know what that is. You gave me the weirdest look. Um, June will use her magic again to amplify her voice slightly. She goes, Dan Bluff is ahead. What? Why? Why would he be out in the middle? Hero. Shit. Does he know? Well, that answers the burning question I've had in my mind this whole trip. Which is which pirate would be stupid or powerful enough to try and take Euphemia's ship? Do you ask that question, Isaac? Yeah, I say that out loud. Zarfin says, the question is whether or not Dambleth set this up somehow, or whether he's taking advantage of an opportunity. I don't know, but if I can sense him, he can sense me. Given Euphemia's reputation, there's no doubt that Dambleth set this up. No pirate would do this on their own. I'm not so sure, Zarfin says towards Isaac. Marjorie's crew is especially brazen, and if they thought they could get away with the Outrunner, they might have just had Hero as a benefit. And they did have reason. That's a good point. If Satan's hand had an idea of... Slaves. Slaves. What? Satan's hand would buy slaves from pirates. They probably have a pre-established deal. They don't know what they have. Maybe not. Maybe. But if we're here, then he might guess. If he can feel you, his mind is already working to decide why we're here. He's going to think we have somebody on that ship. Shit. Or simply want the ship. That's true. It is. If that's ship. true, he may race to destroy the Outrunner before we can reach it. We have to go faster than him. Yes. How? These drakes should be equally as fast as him on his own wings. Which means we'll meet him right there. If we're the same distance away. June? I can't tell. Let's go. He's certainly not alone. He could be with any number of Satan's hand members, but only a number of them can fly. Out of game. Can the Thunder Dude fly? 
No, but he can run on the water. Okay. That's really cool. <laughs> Super cool. <laughs> she goes, and she will state that, or run on the water. Thunder Demon. Yes. Let's pray not. He says. Either way, we can't hesitate. He's going to dip down and soar on. Yes. Let's go. June will launch forward. As you all suddenly, in the distance, after perhaps another half hour of frantic flight forward, see a tiny speck of a ship down below you. Farrick Moonwing has been quite a ways behind your drakes, unable to talk for the distance, but he was there for your conversation. The wing, the winds would blow your drakes away uh, as the great dragon uh, soars by maneuvering gravity and the wind itself around him in a swirling tide pool. Um, his pace has increased substantially, and he now is leading the pack towards the Outrunner. We've made it, he says. And then his eyes catch on a dragon. You see a much larger dragon than Fyrick. An ancient dragon. Its great bulk larger probably than the Outrunner itself. It appears to be composed out of rock and ice. Roland, you would recognize Talgras the Avalanche. You encountered him when you first found Shadow's egg dozens of years ago. The massive dragon had barreled headlong into the ground as you and Harper ran mm -hmm. and hid in a cave from his Enormous bulk smashing craters into the ground around you as you fled on horseback. You remember barely escaping his grasp then. And you see adjacent to him a small black speck. Dambleth the old. As soon as Dambleth sees you all, you're going to see him sort of throw his hand outwards in the far distance, perhaps a mile still away from you all equidistant from the Outrunner, both sides. And as he does, June, you're going to recognize an extended message spell as he points specifically through the group. Wizard, we meet again. I see that you have brought me my next meal. I thank you. I was wondering where I was going to find an angel by year's end. <laughs> Talgrass, crush them. With that, you are going to see from about a mile off, Dambleth is going to take his hands and slide them up. And you are going to see forming around him a huge symbol of the pit. Your eyes widen as he opens a gateway to Satan's realm. And we will end there. Could you do that before? Nope. Well, I thought this was going to be easier. Oh, I had I a feeling wrong. it wasn't going to be easy, but I didn't I think wrong. it was going to be this bad. I was wrong. Oh, God. You're doing fist off right now. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Noble Heroes, for this uh, most frantic run towards the end goal. Mm -hmm. And we will go ahead and call it there for the time being. Please give us a like and a subscribe. Comment below. And do try this at home. <laughs>